Hey, I'm Natalia, the founder of Upskill Me, and you're listening to another episode of my podcast. Here on this podcast, I speak a lot about achieving native-like fluency for non-native speakers. I'm not a native speaker myself, and here I'm sharing practical tips, learning strategies, and exercises that have worked for me. They do work for me, and that's why I continue doing them every single day. You're very welcome to try out these exercises together with me and practice with me right now while listening to this episode. Today I would like to show you the exercise that is called intensive listening practice. I have a full video on YouTube where I explain what this exercise means and why we need to develop intensive listening skills and short-term memory if we want to achieve native like fluency. Feel free to go check it out. Today I want to show you a very specific example. We're going to listen to a few lines from a movie, Finding Nemo. I hope you have seen it in English. If you have only seen it in your first language, probably after this video you'll be motivated to watch the episode or maybe the full movie. And I will show you how you can, if you want, of course, how you can work with any audio material in English to develop your listening comprehension and to be able to understand every single word that native speakers say. Here is the question that my students ask me all the time. It's rather a comment than a question. So what people tell me is that, Natalia, how is it possible when native speakers say the same sentence, I can barely understand them or I cannot understand them at all. However, when you speak, when I watch your YouTube videos, I understand you perfectly well. Or when you repeat exactly the same phrase that a native speaker has just said, I understand you perfectly. I understand you clearly. But when a native speaker says the same phrase, I do not understand it. A very obvious answer to this question is that I am not a native speaker myself. I think my English is pretty decent and I do follow the rhythm of the English language when I speak. I try to make sure that my inflections are all right. I connect words, I connect sounds, and I follow the rules of connected speech when I speak. However, I am not a native speaker and I speak with my own accent. I speak my own way. Many people in the US will ask me, um, what state are you from? And I will go like, what do you mean? I'm not even from this country. I'm not from any state right here. Many people who will meet me in the streets of England, um, you know, they will ask me, hmm, what private school did you go to so that you developed such an interesting accent? I can't place it. So many people will hear that I speak with a slight accent, but they will probably not be able to place it geographically. But some people will immediately notice that I'm not a native speaker and that's fine because I'm not. I do not pretend to be a native speaker because one must be born in an English speaking country and one must speak English from birth to be called a native speaker. However, um, I do want to be understood by native speakers. I do want to speak English naturally, fluently. And I do want our conversations to feel easy and very comfortable. And I'm very okay with the fact that sometimes people confuse me for a native speaker, especially non-native speakers. And I'm flattered when native speakers think that I was born in, Eng in an English-speaking country. So a very simple answer to this question is that I'm not a native speaker. That's why I sound slightly different. However, there is more to that question than what I have just said. We understand some native speakers better than the others. Some people find it incredibly difficult to understand people from the north of Britain, and they find it very easy to understand Americans. Some people find it very difficult to understand the Midwestern accent. However, they are very okay with the Australian accent, maybe because they're, you know, they're exposed to this accent a lot, or maybe they have friends from Australia, or maybe they live there. There are many reasons why one particular accent can be easier for people to comprehend and to understand than other accents. That's why if I say that you can understand me because I'm not a native speaker, this answer wouldn't be true, because sometimes we understand some native speakers perfectly well. They're, they speak at a, at a normal pace, normal for us, right? They do not speak too fast. They do not chew the words. 
their addiction is great, and there can be a million of other reasons. This is why the second obvious answer to this question is the accent. Depending on which accent you are used to hearing more, you know, it's going to be easier for you to understand this specific accent. The reason why I picked Nemo for today's exercise is obvious. Accents. Almost every fish in this movie speaks with a different accent. The shark speaks with an Australian accent, Dory speaks with um, the American accent, and Martin, our clownfish, speaks with an American accent as well. However, many non-native speakers will find it a lot easier to understand Martin than Dory. The reason is very simple. Dory speaks way, way faster. This is why she connects words faster as well, not only words, but sounds. And her connected speech is a little bit more difficult to figure out. It's difficult to figure out what every word in her sentences is, and hence what every word in her sentences means. So if it's not easy to hear, then it's almost impossible to understand what the whole statement means. The exercise that we're going to do right now, and if you're doing it with me, I suggest that you sit down, grab a pen and a piece of paper, and let's do some work. It's not going to take a lot of time, but I really need you to focus and to concentrate. If you're commuting, that's fine as well. If you're driving, maybe as, as you're listening to this podcast, it's okay. But just try to focus on what you're going to hear exclusively. I'm going to play two dialogues for you from the same movie. And I'll ask you to listen to the dialogue and ask yourself, honestly, do I hear every word that fish are saying in this particular scene? What is the criterion or what are the criteria that I hear every single word that people are saying or fish in our context? My criteria are very simple. If I hear everything that people are saying, every single word, I can repeat it. And if I can repeat it, that means I can remember it. This is why listening and short-term memory go together. It's one skill. If we want to learn to hear what people are saying, uh, we need to learn to repeat what they're saying. In order to repeat, we need to remember what people have just told us. And many, many people find it very difficult. Instead of remembering what people have just told them, they immediately start interpreting what people have just told them, and they repeat not what they actually heard, but what they think they have just heard their own interpretation of what they have just heard. This is exactly what we want to avoid, and this is exactly what we do not want to do as we do this exercise. What we want to do is we want to listen very closely to every word that people are going to say. We're going to focus on every word, if we can. And if not, if we can't focus on some words, then we're going to come back to the same line and try to deconstruct it and try to understand what every line means. So if you're ready, Let's listen. All right, here goes the first scene where Martin meets Dory. Will you quit it? What? Trying to swim here. What, the ocean isn't big enough for you or something like that? Huh? You got a problem, buddy? Huh? Huh? Do you? Do you? Do you? One piece of me? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I'm scared now. What? Wait a minute. Stop following me, okay? What are you talking about? You're showing me which way the boat went. A boat? Hey! Seen a boat it passed by not too long ago. It, it went um wait this way. It went this way. Follow me. So that's it. I have played maybe twenty seconds for you, and twenty seconds is trust me is enough time to focus on our listening skills. Now, what we want to understand is if we could hear every single word that Dory and Martin were saying. Let's come back to the first line. <laughs> What? what does she say? She said, will you quit it? Will you quit it? Can you repeat it or can you write it down? Actually, if I say it slowly, it sounds like, will you quit it? And if I say, will you quit it? Will you quit it? It maybe is more clear than when Dory says it, because Dory says it exactly this way. <laughs> Will you quit it? What? We pretty much hear only the word quit. Will you quit it? Will you quit it? We only hear the word quit. She connects quit and it and will you are not stressed 
because they're not content words, they're not supposed to be stressed according to the rhythm of the English language. And we barely hear these words. Will you quit it? But it's very important to hear it and then to understand that this is how the whole phrase sounds when native speakers say it. Will you quit it? Then listen to what she's saying next. Will you quit it? What? I'm trying to swim here. What, the ocean isn't big enough for you or something like that? Huh? You got a problem, buddy? Huh? What does she say? If I open the script and if I start reading this scene to you, it's going to sound like this. Tell yourself as you're listening to this podcast if the way I'm reading it is more comprehensible and it's easier. If the way I'm reading it is easier to understand than the way Dory speaks. She says, will you quit it? I'm trying to swim here. What, ocean ain't big enough for you or something like that? I'm trying to swim here. I'm trying to swim here. What, ocean ain't big enough for you or something like that? If I say it slowly, it's going to sound like this. I'm trying to swim here. Wait, ocean ain't big enough for you or something like that? But never, ever you will hear a native speaker say a line like this, this way. I'm trying to swim here. I'm trying to swim here. I'm trying to swim here. They connect um, trying and swim. So this, I'm trying to swim. This two in between the verbs almost disappears. I'm trying to swim here. I'm trying to swim here. I'm trying to swim here. Wait, ocean ain't big enough for you or something like that? You see, what I'm doing right now is, first of all, I'm looking at the script. I'm reading the script out loud for you. And I'm reading the words with confidence because I know that this is exactly what Dory is saying. But another important thing that I'm doing right now is I'm teaching myself to sound like they do, to connect words and sounds like they do, so that when native speakers listen to me, they understand me because I connect words and sounds exactly like they do. So I sound like just, just like one of them. Wait, ocean ain't big enough for you or something like that? I imitate the rhythm, the, in the intonation, the stress, and I try to connect sounds the way they connect them. Now let's listen to another piece. Hopefully it's going to be a little easier. What are you talking about? You're showing me which way the boat went. What are you talking about? You're showing me which way the boat went. You can hear that Martin speaks noticeably slower than Dory. You're showing me which way the boat went. By the way, what I'm taking for myself from this line is which way. A lot of non-native speakers, a lot of Russian speakers, for example, say what way when they need to say which way. When we speak about direction, it's which. Which way is north? You were showing me which way the boat went. Now, let's listen to how Dora replies. Showing me which way the boat went. A boat? Hey! I've seen a boat. It passed by not too long ago. It, it went, um, wait, this way. What does she say? Could you hear every word that Dory said? Dory said the following. A boat. Hey, I've seen a boat. It passed by not too long ago. It went this way. A boat? Hey, I've seen a boat. It's very important to hear everything, all the contractions, including I've, I've seen a boat. Not I see, not I seen, but I've, I've seen a boat. It's present perfect. Hey, I've seen a boat. I've seen a boat. It passed by not too long ago. It passed by not too long ago. And maybe if I say it, it sounds clearer to you. A boat? Hey, I've seen a boat. It passed by not too long ago. It went this way. But what I'm doing is I am repeating exactly what she is saying. And I just can't sound like Dory. I'm doing my best to imitate Dory. And that's how I'm learning to connect the sounds, just like native speakers do it. And maybe it does sound clearer to you when I speak the same line? Maybe it does. It's clearer than when Dory says it. And we already spoke about the reasons why. Another reason that I would like to add to that is diction. I have a professional habit to speak distinctly and I encourage you to work on your diction as well. First of all, it's going to help you improve your pronunciation. Because even if you speak beautifully and clearly in your first language, you produce a number of quite different sounds when you speak your first language. Your articulation muscles, your jaw muscles are probably not used to producing English sounds. And when you work on your phonetics, you need to exaggerate a little bit. You need to 
overpronounce every letter. That's how you practice diction. You need to open your mouth a bit more when you speak English. And you can practice with very simple words. However, if you do this regularly, if you pay attention to your diction, you will dramatically improve your pronunciation and it's going to be easier for you to connect sounds. Of course, Dory in this scene, you know, <laughs> doesn't really care about diction. She just speaks the way she normally speaks and she connects sounds the way she would connect them in everyday language. And many native speakers do it. You know, they, they just... They just talk, like they talk at home, like they talk to their family, like they talk to their mom. They, they don't try to adapt their language for you. So if you don't have that professional habit, if you do not speak in front of crowds, if you do not teach, if you just don't work with students, if you don't deliver public talks, um, you might not have this habit as well. However, it's a good idea to practice and to work on your addiction. But it's not necessary. My point is that Addiction might be one of the additional reasons of why it can be easier to listen to me when I say the same sentence. Now, let me summarize for you exactly what I did in this exercise. I'm going to break it down for you step after step, and then we're going to apply the same algorithm uh, when we're going to listen to another scene from the same movie. Now, step number one, I played a 20 second video, 20 seconds only. The way I choose videos is very simple. The way I choose scenes in the video is very simple. Very often I do it randomly, just randomly. Or if I want to understand what exactly people are saying in this scene. I mean, I listen to it and I think I'm getting it, but I'm not really sure I'm getting it. So I'm going to play it one more time. 20 seconds. I listen to it back and forth, and I ask myself, can I hear every single word? If I can hear every single word, I can repeat it. If I cannot repeat it, okay, that's a great signal for me that I should listen one more time. And I listen to it one more time. Step number two, I open the transcript. If subtitles are available, I work with subtitles. A tip for everyone, if you work with movies, I suggest you open a real movie script, because if you work with YouTube captions, YouTube captions are not always accurate, and you might not hear a word or two or an article, and if you miss an article and you fool yourself into thinking that there was an article while there wasn't, you, you know, you might get in trouble. You don't want that. You might just want to learn something that you will have to unlearn later. The website goes like this, imsdb.com slash scripts. One more time, imsdb.com slash scripts. This is a website where you can find a script to any movie. You just type in the title of the movie and you will find the exact script. Work with that. Uh, or if you have real subtitles, then work with them. If you're not watching a movie scene on YouTube, and by the way, you can find so many movie scenes on YouTube, it's absolutely free. And this website that I just shared with you is free as well. So I pull up the website and I find exactly the scene I'm working with. I read the subtitles and I ask myself, do I see anything that I couldn't hear as I was watching the scene? Do I see any new words, new sounds, anything that I couldn't identify as I was watching the scene? the first time, or the second time, or the third time. Step number three, I play the video one more time and I follow the script this time. A very, very important thing here. Uh, many non-native speakers, when they work on their listening skills, try to do the same thing. They try to listen to a movie, a podcast, a YouTube interview, and they're trying to do their best to hear what exactly people are saying. And they even turn the subtitles off because they believe it's cheating. Now, I'm telling you the opposite. You need to work with subtitles all the time because they're of great help. It's not cheating, it's help. The only thing you need to change is you need to give your brain a different job. Instead of trying to hear and follow the subtitles at the same time, which for many people is an impossible job, especially when they start working with these exercises, 
What you want to do is you want to read the subtitles while listening to the audio. One more time. Your job is to read while listening. That's right. You focus on the subtitles. This is why you cannot remove them. You should keep them on. You focus on the subtitles, on the words that you see on the screen, and you read them as you listen to the voice of a native speaker who, in fact, is also reading the same subtitles to you. If you think about it, people in movies are reading the script. Yes, they're reading it off, you know, they're reading it from memory, but they're reading it. When you pull up the script and you read it, you read it your way. Now, if we want to understand how native speakers talk, how they connect sounds, and how they pronounce the same words that we know, but we, for whatever reason, pronounce it differently, we want to understand how these people read the same text. We already know that we will read the sentence like this. Probably we're going to read the same sentence this way. I am trying to swim here. Wait. Ocean ain't big enough for you. Yeah, right? Probably that's the way you're going to read the sentence. Now, your job is to listen to how Dory will read the same sentence. And she's going to read it this way. I'm trying to swim here. I'm trying to swim here. Wait, ocean ain't big enough for you or something? This is how she reads it. Step number four. I do not get frustrated over the fact that native speakers <laughs> do not meet my expectations, that they read it differently than what I expect from them. Many, many non-native speakers get upset because they cannot understand. And their frustration stems from the fact that native speakers do not meet their expectations. Whatever they learned before, whatever they thought to be correct or true, in fact, isn't true. And I have to tell you, if you're thinking about it that way, you're not seeing the whole picture. It doesn't mean that whatever you learned before doesn't work or doesn't apply to real world situations. It only means that you have discovered more options. Now you see more options of how the same word can be pronounced. If you say time all the time, right, you'll probably be surprised that Scottish people say tame while they mean time. Or if you read it, I'm trying to swim, that's your way of reading it. But another option is, I'm trying to swim, I'm trying to swim, I'm trying to swim. Someone from the UK would probably say, I'm trying to swim, I'm trying to swim. They will probably not reduce the small word to in the middle. These are all options of how the same words can be read, said, pronounced, and you do not need to imitate a particular accent 100%. I mean, it's a good idea to do this exercise, to try to imitate native speakers. But to me, it's more valuable to be able to understand a variety of accents. Look, when I speak, most people understand me very well. But it doesn't mean that I can only speak with an American accent and I can only understand American accent and I do not understand anything else or anybody else. It's very important for me to teach myself to understand anyone. It doesn't matter if they come from Scotland, from Australia, from New Zealand, you know, from the UK, from the north of England, from the south of England, from Louisiana, from Texas, from New York, from Hawaii. I like the idea that I can understand people. And every time I work with audio materials, I'm learning a variety of different options of how the same word that I think I know how to pronounce, that I think I know how to say, how the same word can be pronounced across different accents, how different people say the same line. Because I know how I will say it, but it's more interesting for me to learn options. And every time I'm going to hear the same word in a different context, I'm very confident that I'm going to recognize it. It's not just confidence based on nothing. It's confidence based on facts. Because I do understand people who speak with different accents. And usually I understand them the first time I hear them. If I don't, 
then I go to YouTube. I found videos on YouTube with that particular accent that I find difficult to recognize or to understand. And I do exactly the exercise that I'm showing to you right now. So that was it. The next step, I believe it was step number five. The next step is, you see what I did? I repeated the phrase that I heard out loud. And I didn't repeat it based on the way I remembered it because chances are very high I remembered it wrong. Chances are very high that I didn't hear an article or I heard the preposition wrong or I didn't hear a contraction. This is why I'm not just repeating what I think I heard in the audio. I always read the script. And then I listen to the video one more time just to confirm to myself that this is exactly what they're saying and I'm reading it correctly. But I am reading the script if I want to repeat exactly what people said in that 20 second video. And that's it. Probably the final step is that I want to fine tune it. I want to make sure that my intonations are the same, that I stress the right words, that I go up or down in the right places, that I pause where they pause, and that my inflections are all right. I'm practicing my own skill of connecting words and sounds correctly, and I'm just having a lot of fun, honestly. Now let's try to apply the algorithm that, I've, that I have just outlined for you. We're going to listen to one more scene from the same movie. We're going to listen to the shark who speaks with the Australian accent. And this time the line is going to be a lot shorter. So step number one, we're going to listen to it. Well, hi. Name's Bruce. It's all right, I understand why I trust a shark, right? That's it. That's step number one. You listen to it and you ask yourself, hmm, can I repeat every single word that the shark said? If you can't repeat it, good job. If you can't repeat it, it makes sense to go to step number two and to complete the exercise. At the end of the exercise, you can hear and repeat every single word and you feel more confident about your own listening skills. So let's say I couldn't understand, I couldn't hear what the shark said exactly. So I'm going to go to step number two. I'm going to probably listen one more time and you can rewind now, you know, a few seconds back and listen to it one more time and then continue listening. Now, once you've done that, let's pull up the script. Um, I opened the script and I'm looking at it and what I'm reading is this. Names Bruce. It's all right. I understand. Why trust a shark, right? I understand every word that I'm reading, but for whatever reason, I couldn't hear the simple words when the shark was talking. So I could ask myself, why? What's that? Was it the accent? Most probably, yes. Because I know all the words. It's just the way the shark said these words didn't really match my expectations because I would read them differently. So one more time, I'm reading this line out loud. Names Bruce. That's one sentence. And again... It goes against my expectations because I would say, my name is Bruce. But the shark simply says, name's Bruce. It's all right. Very simple. I understand. Full stop. Why trust a shark, right? This is how I would read. Now, I'm going to play the scene one more time to listen to how the shark reads the same line. Let's listen one more time. Hi. Name's Bruce. It's all right, I understand why well, trust a shark, right? All right. I am learning, or I'm rather teaching myself, how the words that I'm seeing may sound when Australians say the same words. And I also noticed that it's all right, they don't really say it's all right. They do not stress the word it. It's all right, I understand. And it's more, the, all the vowels are more stretched and relaxed. I'm not pretending now here I can do Australian, right? I can do the Australian accent, but that's how I hear it. And that's why I'm saying it this way. It's all right, I understand what trust shock, right? What I can hear is that they stretch the vowels a bit more than Americans do. And it's very, very different from how British people speak. 
So I'm saying this out loud. I'm reading it a few times out loud just to see if the way I'm saying it sounds similar to the way the shark is saying that. Name's Bruce. It's all right. I understand. Well, I trust a shark, right? And then I will play the same sentence one more time just to see that I can really hear every single word that I see in front of me. This way, the script is helping me to synchronize all these processes in my mind. What I see, what I hear, and what it all means. Because a lot of people have this problem. They either can follow the script or they can watch a movie and they cannot connect these two processes. And if I want to fine-tune it, I'm going to try to imitate the shark. Name's Bruce. It's all right, I understand. What Trust a shark, right? Uh, and it doesn't really matter if I'm hitting it, if I'm doing it perfectly well. I mean, the Australian accent. What is more important to me is that I understand the shark perfectly well, clearly. I can hear every word that the shark is saying, I can repeat it, and I have no problem listening to it all day. And when I continue watching the movie, I can understand everything else that the shark is saying a lot better. So when you do this exercise, when you stop for 20 seconds and you do this exercise back and forth, back and forth, you follow every step of the algorithm until you can hear 100% of pe what people are saying or sharks or fish, you know, whatever. If you continue watching the same movie, the accent that seemed difficult is going to become so much easier for you. So try, give it a try. So let's recap this episode and this fantastic exercise. I'm going to repeat the key things you want to keep in mind as you do this exercise. Number one, read while listening. Instead of trying to listen to whatever native speakers are saying with an intent to hear every word and to understand every word, even though it's difficult, and to look at the subtitles at the same time, reverse the task for yourself. Read the subtitles while listening to how native speakers are reading the same subtitles to you. Or, you know, I prefer imagining they're reading it for me, because in fact they are reading. All you need to do is not to listen while reading, but you need to read while listening. Try and see if it works for you. It works magic for me. And uh, if you do this exercise, well, most people will find that it's getting a lot easier for them to synchronize the sound, the meaning, and the spelling, which is the visual image of the word. And this is actually what we want to achieve. We want to make sure that you instantaneously hear the word, you know how to spell it, and you know exactly what it means. When that happens, it's going to be a lot easier for you to follow the subtitles as you watch your favorite movie or a TV show. Number two, we cannot change the way native speakers talk. Unfortunately, we can't. And all this frustration over the fact that you can't understand native speakers because they speak too fast or they pronounce the sounds not the way you expect them to pronounce them or the fact that they're changing sounds, chewing words, or their accent is just too difficult or they speak too fast is not really helping you in the learning process. So you can get rid of it altogether. You don't need it. Instead, look at it this way. Think about it this way. There is a sentence and you would read it that way. Let's listen to how other people, native speakers, will read the same sentence. And you will discover a lot of options. You do not need to learn to imitate every accent. It's enough to be able to understand every accent. Once you teach yourself to recognize different options, which is pretty much different accents, you will learn that Australian vowels are a little bit more relaxed than American or British vowels. You will also um, keep in mind that Americans drop their T, while British would say water, Americans would say water. And these are just options of how the same word can be pronounced. Once you know what options are out there, it's a lot easier to listen to native speakers, to follow what they're saying, and to understand exactly 
what they mean. Number three, repeating what you're reading out loud is crucial. If you don't do this, you're not doing this exercise properly. If you only repeat it in your head, you're not really practicing your listening skills, you're not really practicing your speaking skills, you're not really practicing your thinking skills. You need to repeat and you need to make sure that you can catch up so you can repeat it as fast as they do as they say the sentence. You got to make sure that you can connect the sounds the way they connect them, that you can contract the words that need to be contracted and that you're practicing your intonations. And the more you practice repeating what they're saying, maybe even imitating their accent, the better your own pronunciation will become. And when you improve your own pronunciation, you will start hearing and understanding people a lot better. Especially when you teach yourself to recognize different accents, which is different options of the pronunciation of the same sound or of the same word. When we cannot hear something, usually it means we cannot say it ourselves. We cannot produce certain sounds ourselves. For example, if it's difficult for you to produce the th sound, and you, you know, many people say the word something, like something, something like that, some something. So they confuse s and th uh, when these words, when these sounds appear in one of the same word, or when these sounds appear in um, a, in, in a number of words that come together in one sentence. And the reason why they cannot figure it out is that they probably cannot hear these sounds properly. It's impossible to repeat what you cannot hear. So if you can't identify the sound, you cannot repeat it. Or maybe you can identify it, but your jaw muscles are not ready and are not trained well to be able to produce that sound. Therefore, you need to listen intensively. But at the same time, you need to train your jaw muscles and your articulation organs, speech organs, so that you can produce the sounds that you are starting to hear. Tongue twisters help a lot here. Exercises to improve your diction help a lot here. And I offer a bunch of exercises to improve diction, pronunciation, phonetics in the listening course. And actually, you know, we start a listening course with the reading exercises because many people are surprised by the fact that they have been mispronouncing words for years because they would always say this word in their head only and they would never pronounce this word out loud. Maybe they were reading a bunch of emails, maybe they were reading documents, but they were reading silently. And of course, if you get used to a certain way of pronouncing a word, which is most likely incorrect, but you understand what it means because it's your variant, it's your option, you will be very frustrated by the fact that you do not understand the word that you're supposed to know when native speakers say this word, because they're going to pronounce it differently. As soon as you improve your pronunciation, your listening skills skyrocket and they improve tremendously. So that's what I have to say. And of course, number four, aim at hearing every single word and remember that it's okay if you hear every word but you do not understand what the whole thing means what we want to train first is we want to learn to hear what we're what other people say don't try to immediately understand like don't try to skip the first step which is hearing many people try to do that and they fail first you got to hear what people are saying then you need to understand if whatever you're hearing is new information, like you've never heard these words before and you have no idea what they mean, or if whatever you're hearing is familiar information, but it just sounds different. It sounds not the way you expect it to sound. Well, you know, then we know exactly what we need to work on. We need to make sure that your expectations match the reality. But if you hear something that you honestly do not know, it's a great sign if you can repeat the words that are new to you. They're new for you. You have no idea what they mean, yet you can hear them. 
You can hear them, you can repeat them, you can say them out loud. And this is a fantastic skill when somebody says a new word in a conversation and you hear the whole sentence, it means you you can repeat the whole sentence back to a person. But there is one element in the sentence that mm, you don't know, you've never heard this word before. So you can go back to a person and say, hey, you said that, and you repeat exactly what they said, the whole sentence. But, but what was that word in the middle? I'm afraid I don't know this word. Could you explain it to me, please? right? So when you're able to identify a new piece of information, you can repeat it back to a native speaker, or you can just Google it and find it in the dictionary. And you can teach yourself what it means. When you practice repeating what you think you're hearing, you will also practice understanding what exactly you need to practice. Do you need to improve your own pronunciation and match expectations to reality? Or... Do you need to practice your short-term memory? So, for example, if you can't, absolutely can't repeat what people have just said, you definitely need to train your short-term memory. Or maybe you just need to focus on expanding your vocabulary. And when you get to hear something that's new to you and when you discover the meaning of this word all by yourself, trust me, you're going to remember it for life. Usually it sticks with you because you have done all this work yourself. So these are the things that you want to keep in mind as you do this exercise. And as a bonus, you know what? Let me show you how it works with a different language. I also speak German and I practice my German the same way, absolutely the same way. The strategy applies to learning any language. So what I did is I... um, I went to YouTube and I picked a video on how to do an exercise with a dual ball. So in German, it sounds dual ball, dual ball. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I bought this device to um, massage my own back after the workout. And to be honest, I bought the device and I was, I, I looked at it and I was not sure how to use it and what to do with it. So I had to go to YouTube to find the answers. And um, I was a bit surprised because most of the videos are in German. They're very good, informative videos. And they tell you how to use this device. They show you exercises, but most information is in the German language. So I thought, why not? Let's practice doing the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play maybe 10 seconds of the video and see what I need to do. So I'm doing this in real time with you. If you speak German, follow along. If you don't speak German, it doesn't really matter. Just listen to what's happening. Fast den ganzen Tag. Erstens ist dadurch eine große Last auf dem unteren Rücken. Auch wenn wir stehen, muss der untere Rücken natürlich einiges aushalten. That's actually enough, you know. Especially if your level is somewhat intermediate, 10 seconds is actually enough. I could do more, but we have already spoken enough. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to definitely play this piece one more time. But this time I'm going to play chunk by chunk. So a phrase phrase by phrase and and I'm going to check my own understanding. Do I hear every fra- every sentence that he's saying and I'm going to break it down into phrases and if I can I'll be able to repeat it. So let's try one more time. Fast den ganzen Tag. Fast den ganzen Tag. So I can hear that. It means almost all day. Erstens ist dadurch eine große La- Erst muss es dadurch eine große and he hasn't finished yet. Erst muss es dadurch eine große Fast den ganzen Tag. Erstens ist dadurch eine große Last auf dem unteren Rücken. Auch wenn Erst muss es dadurch eine große Last auf dem unteren Rücken. I'm gonna try one more time. Ganzen Tag. Erstens ist dadurch eine große Last auf dem unteren Rücken. Auch wenn wir stehen. Ja, yeah. so I added one more piece and now it's, it's gonna I'm gonna repeat the whole thing and see if I can remember it. Den fast den ganzen Tag. Erst muss es dadurch eine große Last auf den unteren Rücken, auch wenn wir stehen. Okay. Und natürlich einiges aushalten. Mm-hmm. Uh, just one more time, because I uh, rewind it a bit too much. One more time, now I'm playing the whole piece. Auf dem unteren Rücken, auch wenn wir stehen, muss der untere Rücken natürlich einiges aushalten. Muss der untere Rücken natürlich schon einiges aushalten. I think I said one word that was too much, but that's okay. Muss der untere Rücken natürlich einiges aushalten. Muss der untere Rücken schon einiges an, ein, aushalten. Yeah, you see, so I 
Um, didn't catch the last word. Muss der untere Rücken schon eigentlich aushalten? And that's enough. I can now go back because I feel like I need to do it one more time. I want to play the whole piece one more time and repeat it. Wir sitzen fast den ganzen Tag. Now I can hear the beginning of the sentence. Wir sitzen fast den ganzen Tag. Erstens ist dadurch eine große Last auf dem unteren Rücken, auch wenn wir stehen. Erst muss es dadurch eine große Last auf dem unteren Rücken, auch wenn wir stehen. Muss der untere Rücken natürlich einiges aushalten. Muss der untere Rücken schon einiges aushalten. Muss der untere Rücken schon einiges aushalten. And this is it. You see, um, that was that piece was a bit difficult for me because compared to English, it's not I don't want to say difficult, but it was just different because compared to English, uh, German sentences are very long and you do not understand what they mean until you come to the very end because the verb is usually at the end. So it's um, It makes more sense to listen to the full sentence to understand what it means and then you can logically break it into phrases or pieces for yourself and then you can repeat the meaningful phrases that you understand because you know where you're going. But the principle is absolutely the same. I played it back and forth for myself every five seconds or so. I tried to repeat what the guy is saying. Then I turned the YouTube captions on and... I'm telling you, the YouTube captions here are not correct. Some of the words are just not the words that I hear, and I know that they're wrong. And it's okay, AI makes mistakes, and even when you watch YouTube videos in English, the YouTube captions are not going to be always correct. Anyway, they were helpful. So I was looking at the subtitles when I was repeating the sentence, and I was reading the subtitles, well, not all of them, the ones that I know are correct, And I was repeating again and again. And now what I would do is I would probably um, try to say the whole sentence just looking just by looking at the subtitles. And then I would listen to the guy one more time. So what I definitely remember is he said, wir sitzen dann, wir, wir sitzen dann, sorry. <laughs> That happens to, wir sitzen fast den ganzen Tag. He's saying we're sitting almost all day. And then I don't remember, to be honest. Rücken, auch wenn wir stehen, dadurch eine große Last auf... Wir sitzen fast den ganzen Tag. Erstens ist dadurch eine große Last auf dem unteren Rücken, auch wenn wir stehen... I listened to it one more time and I realized that I'm, I heard muss es, but actually he says ist es. So I heard the verb wrong. Now I'm going to say it correctly. Erstens ist es dadurch eine große Last auf dem unteren Rücken, auch wenn wir stehen... Listen to him one more time. Muss der untere Rücken natürlich einiges aushalten. Ja, auch wenn wir stehen, muss der untere Rücken schon einiges aushalten. So he's saying that we sit almost all day. Most people sit almost all day. However, even when we stand, our lower back has, has to endure a lot and a lot of tension built up in the lower back. And uh, then he's going to continue and teach me how to use <laughs> the um, Durbal to um, release the pain in the back and to relax the muscles. So that was a good exercise for me because what I have learned just now is that it's a bit more challenging for me to remember what people say in German. And when I look, when I watch these videos and when I listen to the videos in German, I can understand every single word and I follow people along beautifully. Maybe you can relate to it and you experience absolutely the same thing in English. My German is honestly worse than my English. I'm not that fluent because I, uh, I do not practice my speaking skills that often. And I understand people perfectly well. I, um, I can say whatever I need to say, but I'm just slower in German. And a lot of people have a similar relationship with English. They listen to people and they understand everything that people say. But the problem is that they cannot repeat what people said because they already forgot which words people have used. And when they try to repeat what they think they heard, they're using not the vocabulary that people just showed them, that people have just used, but they're using the vocabulary that they know which means they're not learning anything. They're maintaining the same level. And uh, 
The reason is they simply do not remember <laughs> what people have just told them. And the information that they have just received got immediately translated in their first language or maybe in another language. Right now I was um, experiencing German through English, for example. And then when you have to say this idea out loud yourself, you're saying it using the vocabulary that you already know. Not the vocabulary that you could have learned if you listened very attentively and carefully to the person who was talking. If I want to go one step further, if I want to really work on my German comprehension, listening comprehension skills, what I would do is I would turn the subtitles off and I would play the next 20 seconds and I would do the transcribing exercise. I would sit down and write down everything that I hear, every word that I hear, and then I'm going to turn the subtitles back on, and I'm going to compare if what I have written down actually matches what he really said. And then I'm going to play the video again and again to make sure that I can hear the elements that I have missed or that I have misheard. That's another fantastic exercise. But if you want to learn more, you know, let's keep in touch on YouTube, on Instagram. You can join my listening course. We're doing so many things there. And people are making just amazing progress over there. Try this exercise yourself and see how that works for you. If you have any questions about the steps, about the algorithm, about the details and the nuances of this exercise, feel free to comment under this podcast and get in touch. Let's talk about it and let's work towards better listening skills. But keep in mind that when you do these exercises, you're not only working on your listening skills, you're also working on your speaking skills and your thinking skills in English. <laughs>